Coloplast invited these people to share their experiences of living with an ostomy and were provided compensation. Each person's situation is unique. Your experience may not be the same. The recommendations and information within this video are general guidelines, meant to help you with typical questions. You should follow the specific instructions provided by your healthcare team for you and the pouching system you are using. Before I had the irritable bowel disease ulcerative colitis, I had never heard of an ostomy before. After surgery, I remember waking up and kind of glancing down and saying, what just happened? And here's this bag on me. I got a change in my plumbing here. I got I to gotta deal with it. How productive is my life going to be now that I'm wearing this appliance on my body? Can I work out? Can I go swimming? Can I do anything now? After the surgery, I end up with, you know, my stomach, and I didn't know what to do. Would someone still love me the way they did before, now that I look different or have this? It's not a big deal. You can, you can handle it. It's not rocket science. I can go anywhere. I can do anything I want with no problem at all. Having the surgery and having my ileostomy actually allowed us to venture out, do new things, do the things we love to do, and just continuing living life the way we should. You are watching this program because you or someone you love has had surgery that resulted in an ostomy. You probably have many questions about your new stoma and how you will take care of yourself. Or maybe you have concerns that this surgery will change your lifestyle. The fact is, over 100,000 people in the United States undergo ostomy surgery every year, and many continue to lead very active and fulfilling lives. This program was created to help answer some of the questions you may have, such as, why was this surgery necessary? What can I expect after surgery? How do I empty and change my pouch? And what do I need to know for day-to-day -day living? We will review each of these questions and share advice and experiences from people who are just like yourself so that you can see that an active lifestyle is possible with an ostomy. Either before your surgery or soon after, you'll meet a specially educated nurse called a wound ostomy continence nurse, who we will refer to in this program as an ostomy nurse. Your ostomy nurse will educate and support you in all aspects of ostomy care. A person has an ostomy sometimes called a stoma, to cure or ease the symptoms of a disease that occurs in the digestive or urinary tract system. Let's start by looking at what happens to the food you eat so that you will understand how your new ostomy will function. During the digestive process, the food is passed from the stomach into the small bowel, where nutrients from the food are absorbed. Hours later, the food is passed into the large bowel or the colon, where water is absorbed and the stool changes from liquid to solid. Stool is then pushed through the colon and leaves the body through the anus. With an ostomy, a portion of the bowel is rerouted to an opening on the surface of your abdomen or belly. The word ostomy means opening. If the opening is created in a portion of the small intestine called the ileum, then the stoma is called an ileostomy. An opening in the large intestine, or colon, is called a colostomy. An opening involving the urinary tract system is called a urostomy. The part of the bowel that you see on the outside of the abdomen is called a stoma. To create a stoma, the bowel is turned inside out, much like turning a sock inside out. And just like the inside of the mouth, the stoma is red and moist. When changing your pouch, you may see some bleeding on the stoma. But don't be alarmed. A small amount of bleeding is normal, and since there are no nerve endings, there is no feeling of pain. After surgery, the stoma may be swollen, but it may shrink to a smaller size within six to eight weeks as it heals. Prior to surgery, you had the sensation of needing to have a bowel movement. Now, as a result of your surgery, you will no longer have control of your bowel movements 
and will need to wear a pouch on your abdomen to collect the stool. I have an ileostomy. I've had this ileostomy for four years now. Prior to even getting ulcerative colitis, I was an athlete and I was healthy and I never once thought I would ever be diagnosed with a disease that was very debilitating. Mine just got really bad really fast. I was admitted to the hospital with an emergency total colectomy to remove my colon and in turn place an ileostomy bag. A positive attitude going through what I went through is the most beneficial thing I could have had. I'm just thankful that I can do what I want to do day to day. I'm not locked down to trying to find the restroom or trying to figure out how to control my bowels anymore. I don't have pain. I don't have any illness associated with the colon disease anymore. I was seeing a urologist in River Falls for some typical male prostate issues. And there was a tumor in my bladder. And he took a biopsy and about a week later he called me and he said, Dale, you've got cancer. So the most aggressive way of handling the situation was removing the bladder. I have a urostomy, I've had it for almost 10 years. I look at this as a rebirth, it's not a big deal. It's not apparent that I'm wearing any appliance whatsoever. I wear the same clothes, I do the same things. I haven't changed my lifestyle at all. When I find out that I need a colonostomy, I was so worried. I didn't know exactly what should I expect. I thought life was over for me. After surgery, little by little, I get adapted to my new life, which now has been almost three years, and I'm really happy. I'm a seamstress. I love to sew. I do garments. I do patterns. I thought I'm never going to be able to do that again. I can live a normal life. I can do a lot of things that I like to do that I used to do before, and it's great. I have an ileostomy, and I've had it for a little over 11 years. One of my main hobbies is fitness. I enjoy working out. Um, I don't really limit or restrict myself. Uh, just because I have an ileostomy, I think it actually makes me push myself a little bit harder. So really what I want to prove is to show people, hey, this is a second chance to do something that you want. Don't let it limit your abilities or uh, kind of control your life because the illness actually controlled our lives. You can expect your ostomy to begin the function around two to five days after surgery. The way your stool will look will depend on the type of ostomy you have. A normal byproduct of waste leaving your body is gas and a certain amount of odor. At first, you may experience more gas than usual as your gastrointestinal tract is emptied from the operation. At times when gas escapes, you may even hear a noise, just as you might hear when gas is expelled from the anus. Personally, I've just learned that if you kind of feel the pressure coming, which I tend to, I just kind of easily put my arm, my forearm, or my hand over it. It kind of muffles the sound a little bit. Um, and honestly, no one knows you're doing it. No one even can hear any noises. Ostomy pouches are available in many different styles. They have two main components, the adhesive portion, known as the barrier, and the collection device, known as the pouch. The barrier is the most important part of the pouching system because it protects your skin and keeps your pouch in place. In the hospital, you may wear a clear pouch so that your caregivers can monitor your stoma. You may want to switch to an opaque pouch after leaving the hospital. There are many pouch options available and you will find the pouch that is right for you. There are two main types of pouches a drainable pouch allows you to empty your stool periodically during the day. They are available in different styles with either an integrated Velcro closure or a clamp closure. Another option is a closed pouch, which cannot be drained, but is thrown away when the pouch becomes full. Be sure to discuss these options with your ostomy nurse. Most pouches are made of clear or beige plastic with some type of cloth covering the front or back. Newer pouching systems can be found in a neutral gray color and are made of a soft textile, much like clothing. No matter what style, they are all held to the skin by an adhesive barrier and are odor-proof. Some even have a filter that deodorizes the gas when it passes through the pouch. 
pouches are typically lightweight, and many are designed so they cannot be seen under clothing. With clothing choices, initially I was concerned that I would have to buy a whole new wardrobe and nothing would fit. I was pleasantly surprised that when I started trying on things, they actually did fit. The biggest thing is that you just can't have pants going straight across the stoma to block it, especially anything tight. So I just make sure they're either lower or higher and, and loose enough that they're not pushing right on it. But if it's a little low waist, they're fine with me and I can wear with any type of blouse, any type of dress. You don't have to wear special clothes for that. There are also two main types of pouching systems. The one-piece system has a pouch and barrier that attach to the body as a single unit. In a two-piece system, the pouch and barrier are separate and attach by snapping or adhering the pouch to the barrier. A two-piece system will allow you to remove and replace the pouch without removing the barrier. This can be a very convenient option. Some two-piece systems have a locking ring for added security and others are attached by an adhesive ring for a low profile and secure fit. Your ostomy nurse can explain these options to you in more detail. Your ostomy nurse may also recommend adding an ostomy accessory, such as an ostomy belt, moldable ring, strip paste, or elastic barrier strips. These are sometimes used to help you get a better fit with your pouching system. I do wear the two-piece system because as active as I am, I like to be able to not have to worry about always switching out the bag. Probably about the third day, I will change that bag. Uh, it's the locking system, so there's that security. After surgery, your ostomy nurse will select the type of system that suits you best as you heal. However, over time, your stomach contours or needs may change, and your ostomy nurse may recommend another type of system. Trying out different pouching options can help you know what works best for you, your lifestyle, and your body type. One of the first things your ostomy nurse will teach you is how to empty your pouch. The best time to empty your pouch is when it's one third to one half full or whenever you feel it is needed for comfort or convenience. It's best not to allow the pouch to fill more than halfway. This can make emptying the pouch more difficult and it can become heavy, causing the barrier to loosen from the skin. To empty your pouch, begin by holding up the end of the pouch. Then open the Velcro closure or unfasten the clamp. If using a pouch with a Velcro closure, unfold the outlet and fold back the end. If using a pouch with a clamp, you can fold up or cuff the end of the pouch to help keep the opening clean. Regardless of which pouch you have, drain the contents into a toilet. Next, wipe the end of the pouch with a tissue by using a sliding movement away from the body. Be sure to get all the stool off the end of the pouch. This will help prevent odor. Finally, if you have a pouch with a Velcro closure, fold the bottom foam plate over the large foam plate and fold up the end of the pouch two more times until the Velcro is visible. Then lay the Velcro tabs in place and press together. If you have a pouch with a clamp, uncuff the end of the pouch and replace the clamp. Once the pouch is closed, the pouch will once again be odor proof. Once you are out of the hospital and are moving around with less discomfort, you may find it more convenient to simply empty your pouch directly into a toilet. Practice these easy steps at home and you will find that emptying your pouch in any restroom will be simple, fast, and discreet. Sit back on the toilet and place the end of the pouch between your legs or stand and lean over the toilet. To prevent splashing, you can place tissue into the toilet or empty the pouch while flushing then simply follow the same cleaning steps as demonstrated earlier. If you are concerned about odor, you may find it beneficial to use liquid deodorizing drops in the pouch or spray a deodorizer in the air. When you first leave the hospital, you may change the pouching system every three to five days, depending on your comfort and security. How long a pouch is worn will depend on your body, how active you are, how much output you have, and the type of pouch you use. Some people find that the mornings are a good time for changing the pouch before you eat or drink. Others take advantage of a quiet time during the day. You will find the routine that works best for you. When I change my appliance every four days, I take a good look at the skin around my stoma because I've got 
some hair growth there. I have to shave around the stoma every four days, not a big deal. I get in the shower, I wash around it, I'm not using any soap, and I get out, dry off, lie on a bed, put my appliance on, and just uh, have some quiet time. When changing your pouch, make sure all your supplies are within reach. These may include soft paper towels or a washcloth, warm water, a new pouch and barrier, and accessories if recommended by your ostomy nurse. Begin by removing your pouching system. Gently remove the barrier, working slowly from the top to the bottom. Push down on the skin as you lift off the barrier. Never rip or tear off the barrier because this could cause your skin to become red or sore. Place the used pouch either in a disposable bag offered by some manufacturers or in a sealable plastic bag and throw away into the garbage. Remember to never flush a pouching system down a toilet. Next, use a soft paper towel or washcloth with warm water to gently wash and rinse the skin around your stoma. If you choose to use soap, use a mild soap without moisturizers, oils, or deodorants. Be sure to rinse thoroughly as soaps, lotions, and creams can irritate skin or prevent the barrier from sticking. Lastly, pat the skin dry. This is also a good time to look at the stoma and the skin around it. The skin around your stoma should look like the skin on the rest of your body, and the stoma should look red and moist. If it looks different to you or concerns you, contact your ostomy nurse. If you see some bleeding on the stoma, don't be alarmed. Some bleeding is normal. During the six to eight weeks after your operation, your stoma may decrease in size as it heals. Measure the stoma once a week during this time, and after this time, at least once a month. Take the measuring guide provided to you by your ostomy nurse and place it over your stoma. The opening should be the same size as the stoma. Using this measurement, trace the size and shape of the stoma on the tracing guide and cut it out. Next, remove the protective paper from the barrier. Center the barrier around the stoma and press firmly against the skin. Holding the barrier against your skin helps it adhere to your body. If your stoma becomes active during the pouch change, wipe the stool away with a tissue, as your skin must be clean and dry while putting on the barrier. Make sure the Velcro closure or clamp is securely fastened. Finally, if you are using a two-piece system, attach the pouch at this time. If you have questions or problems changing your pouch, ask your home health provider or ostomy nurse for assistance. I think I was initially worried if the bag would stay put, but finally I got that confidence. Like, you know what, these are good products, the ostomy's good, it's not going anywhere. So I'm at a point in my life where I can change my appliance laying down, standing up, sitting down, doesn't matter. I can do it just like that. We have that never give up attitude, you know, no matter what circumstance occurs that you can get through it and keep working and show others what you're capable of doing. It's just an appliance, it's just changed a little bit of how I look, but it hasn't changed who I am or how I feel, and that has radiated into our intimate life together. I'm so happy that I was able to get pregnant with an ostomy and then have my son. So it worked and it was great. <laughs>
I change out my appliance every four days. Very, very seldom do I have a problem with it. I ride bike, I go kayaking on the river, we sit in the hot tub on a, on a regular basis. It's one of the things that we really love to do, especially in the winter time. My wife and I travel all over the world. We were just to Alaska about a month ago. We we're in the Bahamas last year. We go all over the place. In addition to advising you on physical activity, your doctor may put you on a special diet or caution you against specific foods. Enjoying good food is part of a full life, but also be aware that some foods you eat can naturally produce more gas. Examples include carbonated beverages, broccoli, cabbage, and onions. In addition, there are also foods that may cause an unusual odor in your urine or stool. Some of these include fish, cheese, garlic, and asparagus. This is nothing to be worried about, but you may choose to limit them at certain times. No matter what type of diet, remember to eat slowly and chew food well. It is important for your health that you drink plenty of fluids every day. If you have a urostomy, drinking fluids will help to flush your urinary tract of bacteria and prevent infection. If you have an ileostomy, you will need to drink more fluids than before to keep your body properly hydrated. For either an ileostomy or a colostomy, be sure to check with your doctor before adding medications if you experience diarrhea or constipation. Returning to work can be a challenge after any type of major surgery. You may feel uncomfortable talking about your operation with coworkers and others in your life. The choice of sharing is up to you. However, it's usually best that at least one coworker knows that you've had ostomy surgery in case any issues arise on the job. Those that need to know, I'll talk openly about it, but those that don't need to know, I don't even have to bring it up because it's not apparent that I'm wearing uh, any appliance whatsoever. I'm pretty open. I talk to people who need the same kind of surgery. I share with them and I talk to them about it. I really enjoy doing it to help people. I'm really happy when they find out that it's, that it's okay, that it's fine. Don't wait until you're out of supplies to reorder, as they may take a few days to arrive. As a general rule, when you have gone through half a box of supplies, place your order. Always measure your stoma first to make sure you order the correct size. If you are traveling, remember to plan ahead. You want to take plenty of supplies for your trip. When I'm traveling, I just have to make sure that I've got supplies with me. And usually if I know I'm going to be on a long plane ride or a train ride or something, I probably would change out my appliance the night before just to make sure that I've got a fresh appliance on for the, for the travel day. We hope this program has helped you and has answered some of your questions. It may take some time to adjust to your new ostomy. If at first it seems overwhelming or you have questions, remember this, you're not alone. You have several resources to tap into, such as your ostomy nurse, some manufacturers have support programs that can assist you in finding the right product. One example is the Coloplast Care Program. A Coloplast Consumer Care Advisor can assist you with product and lifestyle-related questions, as well as provide education and inspiration related to your needs and interests. The United Ostomy Association, which is a group of people with ostomies, can also provide education and support. These resources can help you feel more comfortable, confident, and in control. We like to go out to dinner. We like to live an active life. Uh, having an ulcerative colitis really controlled my life and limited the things we could do. It would actually cause me to not want to leave the house. So having the surgery and having my ileostomy actually allowed us to venture out, do new things, do the things we love to do, and just continue living life the way we should. Your attitude has to be very positive. Don't be afraid. Thanks to this type of surgery that I have, I'm alive. I'm very happy. This is a second chance at life. This is a better life. And I made that decision from day one, and every day since then, I've decided I'm going to get my life back even better than it was before, and I'm gonna accept this. And it's no big deal, and I'm very thankful that I went through it. Coloplast Care 
is a program offering advice and inspiration to help you do more. Call 1-877-858-2656 today to start receiving support and your free samples through Coloplast Care.